Shabbat Shalom, everyone, Pinay Or Hevra, extended family and friends near and far. Today we read from Parshat Baha'alot Cha. We continue to follow the adventures of our people as we prep for leaving our encampment at Har Sinai to journey towards, well, we're not sure. But we are trying to go home. The Mishkan has come online. And last week, Aaron channeled powerful blessing to the people and the world through the high shamanic practice of Birkat Kohanim. Today, the tribe of Levi is initiated into the service of the Mishkan, and Aharon HaKohen will raise light, flaring up the lights of the gold menorah. For several years, from time to time, a Devar Torah by someone named Bill Flynn, if you're listening out there, I'm referring to you. A Devar Torah by someone named Bill Flynn would show up in my email. I don't know who he is or how I came to receive these, but he always had a take on the Parsha that was a new twist, especially for this one. Here he says, this Torah portion begins with Aharon lighting the menorah, one of the coolest things anyone gets to do in the Torah. In effect, he is lighting every menorah that will ever be lit from the grand golden artifice in the temple to the tiny makeshift Chanukiyot, hidden desperately in concentration camps. Think of all the light in the world he initiated. Aaron gets to do something that is continually created, which is very godlike. This may be one of the holiest acts. In Torah. So let's stop there for a minute. Last week when we raised our hands in Birkat Kohanim, we saw that the gesture inviting light to stream from our fingertips shows us that each one of us is in the pattern of the seven branch menorah like the great menorah in the Mishkan and then in the Beis HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, it and we are like holy satellite dishes, continually sending and receiving energy from the vast divine sourcing power of the cosmos, channeling it into our world and returning the light of our hopes, dreams, and prayers back to fulfill the circuit. Lighting the menorah for the first time opened that channel, one which we have tended for untold generations. It opens every time you light your humble Chanukiah. But even more, it is always open, right there inside of you. It is you. For the pattern of the menorah is you. But wait, there is more. He goes on to say, however, this is not the holiest act in this Parsha. We all know that what is most hidden is most holy. And no act of holiness was ever more hidden than Miriam's. She earned no honor, no praises for her sacrifice. As far as I can determine, no commentator has ever understood that her action was to protect all Yisrael. For thousands of years, 
The whole world has seen the glory of the menorah. No one ever saw what Miriam did. Hmm. What does he mean? Well, he has an extraordinary take on this episode in this Parsha, in which Miriam is stricken with Sara'at as a consequence of a public critique of Moshe's leadership that is admittedly hard to unpack, though many have tried. The context is another of those waves of complaining that surface among the people. Even as extraordinary things are happening, fatigue and discomfort have their effects. We have barely left our camp at Har Sinai behind when the complaining begins again. People are dissatisfied with the food. The manna is boring. Crowds demand that Moshe change the menu. People want meat. It is another huge crisis and a whole episode. In the end, Moshe appoints 70 elders to whom he imparts some of his prophetic capability to assist him in governing the people. That creates another huge crisis. The transmission spills over. It is out of control. Eldad and Medad begin to trip on this new capacity and are running around the camp. They appear to have enough of the prophetic spirit that Yehoshua can see in a flash how Moshe's leadership could crumble. In radical alarm, Joshua rushes to Moshe to rope them in. But humble Moshe blows him off, saying, Chill, would that everyone could be a prophet. Sounds good. But with everything that is happening, a recipe for disaster. Miriam too is alarmed. Moshe's leadership has never been at as much risk. She takes a bold step. Miriam steps forward and publicly speaks negatively of Moshe and is punished with Sara'at. The content of her challenge is not clear. It perhaps has racial overtones. It is hard to unpack. But the mere fact of it draws our attention. Humble Moshe prays for her healing. El na refanala, el na refanala. That is the healing prayer we still sing today. And in an outpouring of love for Miriam, the entire encampment of 12 tribes stays put for seven days for her to recover. Here is Bill's unorthodox take. Miriam's kvetch about Moshe appears to be self-centered. She has high-level prophetic status too. So the appearance is that she's pushing her own prophetic status. But in reality, this is actually a brilliant maneuver. She 
clearly sees the threat, just like Yehoshua did. And she sees her humble brother blow it off and disregard the danger. In this view, she challenges Moshe as a maneuver not to diminish, but in fact to establish his preeminence. She takes preemptive action. She finds a pretext to criticize Moshe and specifically compares his level of prophecy to hers. She does this knowing that visible consequences await. Aaron and Moshe were the holiest prophets around except for Moshe. Miriam knew that when the Pee-wee wannabe prophets saw her getting chastised, they would think, wow, if God does that to Miriam for challenging Moshe, I'd better back off. Miriam knew her punishment would prevent a rebellion and save the people of Israel. Miriam took the holy heat so we wouldn't have to. By forestalling future disputes of Moshe's authority within the range of her options, she protected Yisrael and ensured the cohesion of our community. For the sake of others, she literally risked divine wrath. Moshe gave of herself in the highest possible manner in secret. Giving to others is a major theme in this Parsha, as is fetching. One lesson is that it's okay to kvetch, as long as you're doing it for someone else, not for yourself. As Bill concluded in his drash, Miriam's hidden holiness reminds us also to honor the hidden ones, the scorned, the humiliated, and those who stand outside the community. We should remember with respect those who dwell in the shadows, who perform their deeds in secret, whose tales are never told. While their light might be the hardest to see, it may be the brightest. Today, when you rise, if you wish, for the Aliyah to Torah, affirm one way in which you can give of yourself. Take a risk in behalf of others. Channel light, especially without anyone else realizing. It's great to be a big blazing gold menorah in the Mishkan. But the humble light that we light, that are the hardest to see, may be the brightest of all. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We enter the gate of Torah. Kimi tziyom teitzei Torah, udvar Adonai mi Yerushalayim.
hundred-year-old Sephardi scroll that Jack's father rescued in late 1941 from Nazi-occupied Paris. This scroll, by the way, has had many travels, including being carried by us up the many steps to the pinnacle of Jebel Musa, the humble mountain in the Sinai Desert, which tradition has assigned as Har Sinai. Today also, as we call out the Torah blessings, I've been invited to point out that in our beloved Pinay or Sidur, you will find the traditional bracha before the Torah reading, along with new adaptations. You may hear these and other adaptations of the Torah brachas when individuals or groups are called up for aliyot to the Torah. This reflects a natural creative process at work in the renewal of Jewish life and practice. In order to be true to both the traditional bracha and the many beautiful contemporary adaptations, you have and will hear Jack and you will hear me offer divergent Torah brachas, allowing the different versions to intertwine. Listen carefully, for you will hear not only a single iteration of the bracha, but more than one. V'yazor v'yagen v'yoshia l'achol ha'chosim bo v'nomar Amen Hakol havu godel l'eloheinu u'tnu chavod la'torah ya'amod la'torah ya'amdu la'torah Baruch shenatan Torah le'amo Yisrael b'gidushato ואתם הדבקים בדוני אלוהיכם, חיים כולכם היום. We call 
to this, Aliyah, everyone, wherever you are, rise as you are able, affirming one way in which you can give of yourself and take a risk in behalf of others, to channel light, especially without anyone else realizing it. For it is great to be a big blazing gold menorah in the Mishkan. But the humble lights that we light, that are the hardest to see, may indeed be the brightest of all. Baruchu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach leolam vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach leolam vaed. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher bachar banu biyahava uvratzon. Venatan lanu et Torato. Brucha adia shchina notenet haTorah. והעשה סוף, אשר בקרבו התאבו תאווה וישבו, ויבכו גם בני ישראל, ויאמרו, מי יאכילנו בשר? זכרנו את הדגה אשר נאכל במצרים חינם, את הכישורים ואת הבטיחים, ואת החציר ואת הבצלים ואת השומים, ועתה נפשנו יבשה, אין כל בלתי אל חמן איננו. And now, a fringe element living among the people starts complaining and whining, and the rest of the people pick up on it, sitting there in their tents, crying and weeping, everybody saying, who's going to feed us meat? We remember the fish we could eat for free in Egypt. The melons, the cucumbers, the leeks, and the garlic. But now our very souls are drying up because there's nothing but this man to eat. Now, the haman, kizra gal hu ve'ene ke'en habdolach. Shatu ha'am velaktu v'thanu b'rechaim. Odachu b'amdocha. ובישלו בפרור ועשו את עוגות, והנה טמא כטעם לשד השמן. Now, man itself seems to have been kind of like caraway, and it could be ground up in various forms and baked into cakes, and it has a flavor kind of creamy. So now, Moshe comes to Yah and says, What am I going to do with your servants? What's going to happen to me if I find favor with you? How can I possibly carry all these people by myself? It's too heavy for me. I didn't give birth to them. You want me to carry them like a suckling infant in my bosom all the way to the land that you have promised. I can't handle it. So if this is really what's going to happen, let me die now. I can't take it. Vayomer ya el Moshe. Esperish. שבעים איש מזקני ישראל אשר ידעת כי הם זקני העם. 
ושוטרה ולקחת אותם אל אוהל מועד והתייצבו שם עמך וירדתי ודיברתי עמך שם ואצלתי מן הרוח אשר עליך ושמתי עליהם ועשו איתך במסע העם ולא תישא אתה לבדיך. So Yah now says to Moshe, Okay, let's try this. Gather, come close to me, 70 of the elder leaders of Yisrael, who, that you know are the true leaders of the people. Come together, gather them with me, and I will spread some of the spirit wind which rests upon you and spread it to them so that the people can see and that the spiritual leadership will get spread among other people and you won't have to do it all yourself. Vayetse <clears throat> Moshe וידבר אל העם את דברי אדוני. Now Moshe leaves from the presence of Yah and speaks all of these words to the people, the words of Yah. וייעשה שבעים איש, and were gathered to him, seventy of the elders of the people, and they stand there, the seventy, all together, and rests upon them. The spirit wind, and they open up and channel prophecy and ecstatic speech without ceasing. And then two of these particularly, Eldad, and the other one was called Medad, resting upon them the spirit wind. And they were on the edge of the group that was brought in with Moshe. And they start running around the camp and channeling ecstatic speech everywhere. Saying to Moshe, Eldad and Medad are still at it out there in the camp. And Yehoshua turns to Moshe and saying, Moshe, my master, you've got to shut them down. And Moshe says, you're jealous on my part. Ah, oh, this is great. Halavai, should all of the children, the whole people of Yah, become prophets and channelers of the Holy Spirit wind. But, Chaos has been released. Vayasaf Moshe, Vayasaf Moshe el Hamachane, who was the Knei Israel. Veruach Nasa me et Adonai. And Moshe and the seventy elders were gathered back into the people, and the spirit wind ceased from coming from Yah. And now, Veruach Nasa Me'et Adonai Vayagat Salvim Min Hayam Vayitosh Al Hamachane Kederech Yom Kederech Yom Ko Sevivot Hamachane Uchamataim Al Penei Haaretz Now the spirit wind of Yah blows in from the ocean, blowing in vast flocks of quail, which all land all around the camp, and the people happily run out and gather all the quail into piles, and they sit down to eat, and they eat, and they eat. Habasar odenu ben shinehem teren yikaret and the meat is still stuck in their teeth. They haven't even finished eating. Ve'af Yah charaba'am. And the rage of Yah is released and flames in the people. And many are struck down. 
ויקרא את שם המקום ההוא קברות הטבה. Now that place has become named the place of the burial, the graves of craving. כי שם קברו את העם המתאבים. מקברות הקו תאבן נשאו, because there are buried all of those who died out of their unlimited cravings. And now the people travel forward. We move to a place called Chatserot, courtyards, the place where we seek a pattern and a way of making sense of the chaos all around us. And there is where we make camp. Nasu ha'am chatserot v'yiyu b'chatserot. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו, ברוכה עדיה השכינה, נותנת התורה. that our cravings not overtake and rule us. That our cravings not unleash harm in the world, but rather that we channel light, that we be living channels of the Ruach HaKodesh in productive ways, in modulated and productive ways so that our humble light will shine the brightest. In behalf of that hope and in the words of Moshe Rabbeinu, who prayed for the healing of his sister Miriam when she was stricken, we pray the same ancient words today. Anna, please. Eil na rafana la, eil na, please God, rafana la, please God, heal. And she was healed. At this time, we invite you to hit pause if you wish and offer the names of those to whom you would hope that our prayers of healing extend towards their hearts and their lives. Anna Elna Rafanala, we pray. Please heal. As you hold on our hearts, and some may continue if you wish to speak aloud, the names of those to whom you would wish our healing prayers be sent. From Torah to you, reach forward, reach to someone else, reach to a shoulder imaginally near you, reach towards Torah as we pray. Anna, Anna. Refana la Anna Elna Refana la Anna Elna Refana la Anna Elna Refana
We pray for a complete healing. Refuat nefesh, refuat guf, the healing of spirit and the healing of body for all of those whom we hold in our hearts. We rise together as we are able, as the scroll is lifted. Vezot HaTorah, Asher Sam Moshe, Livnei Vnei Yisrael, Alki Adonai, Beyai Moshe. Yisrael Veoraita Vekudesha Berichu Chalhu Yisrael Veoraita Vekudesha Berichu Chalhu Torah Ora Torah Ora Hallelujah Torah Ora Torah Ora Hallelujah Hallelujah, Torah, 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 Hallelujah, Torah, 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 Hallelujah. It's high. every light, including those lights which are the hardest to see, can be the brightest of all, ushering in a world of shalom, of wholeness, completion, fulfillment, perfection, and peace. Aleinu for all of us. Odiavo shalom. Aleinu. Od yavo shalom aleinu, od yavo shalom aleinu, od yavo shalom aleinu. Oh, 
for the way the world can and must be. We offer at this time a Kaddish Yatom, a mourner's Kaddish, inviting anyone in our extended Chevra who is perhaps at this time in a time of mourning or observing a yard site or who perhaps has taken upon yourself the custom of rising into Kaddish Atom in behalf of all of those who have perished with no one to say Kaddish for them. As you are able, please rise at this time. Kaddish Atom. <coughs> we pause for a moment so that anyone who might wish can say the name of the one or ones for whom you say Kaddish this morning. Kaddish Yatam. Yitkadal v'yitkadash emei rabo be'olma divra chirutei v'yamlich malchutei Bechayechon, Uviomechon, Uvechaye, the whole Beit Israel, Bagala, Uvisman, Kari, Vimru, Amen, Yehesh, Me, Rabban, Morak, Alam, Olome, Olmaya, Yit Barak, Vishtabak, Vit Paar, Vit Romam, Vit Nase, Vit Adar, Vit Alev, Vit Alal, Shemay, the Kudisha, Rihu, Laela, Minkol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Mata da Miran de Alma, Vimru Amen, Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vechayim, Alenu Vel Kol Yisrael, Vimru Amen. O se shalom, Bimroma, who ya a se shalom, Alenu Vel Kol Yisrael, Vel Kol Yosrete Vel, Vimru Amen. And may there be a great shalom, wholeness, completion, perfection, and peace for us and for all of the people and creatures of this world. Bim hei ravi ameno, speedily and in our day. Today would be good. We close our gathering this morning in Keloheinu.